Hello there. Today, not only am I going to be telling you how to get a grade nine in GCSE RE, but I'm also going to be telling you how I got 98 out of 99 in RE paper one, losing only a mark in SPAG, which I think is a bit of a scam. But anyway, into the video we go. So my first tip, which is underrated, it's to understand the content. What people don't realize is if you understand the content, you have less to memorize. And if you've got less to memorize, it saves you revision time and you can memorize quotes instead. And really the first step to sit any exam is to get the base knowledge. Now you can do this in different ways and everyone learns differently. You can perhaps be a fast learner and learn with the PowerPoints that your teacher shows you or watch videos on YouTube. There's also this revision guide, which breaks down everything in the specification. Make sure you get the right one because in AQA, there's GCSE, RE, A and B. I, I got A first because, um, yeah, I got the wrong one. Stupid. So this is the one for my spec actually. So yeah, saves you money. In my school, we did AQA, GCSE, RE, B. And the difference between those two is A is for schools who perhaps don't have a certain religion that they're following. My school was a Catholic school. So we did the GCSE RE paper, which had Christianity and Catholicism as paper one. Here's another revision guide that my mum found on a street library. Um, someone has just dropped off all of their finished revision materials in this pocket sized edition was there. It's got like little posters of all of the summary topics. That's useful if that helps you learn it. To be honest, I didn't really use it because I don't really use posters as such. I use more flashcards and they really help me. So yeah, you can use PowerPoint, you can use revision guides, you can make mind maps, you can make posters, anything that helps you get your knowledge down, making notes only at the beginning stages because you want to really consolidate those first ideas. Once you've first understood all of the content, and perhaps this is what you do in year 10. Um, you can start making flashcards. In my GCSE RE paper, there were four, well, there's four different topics that come up. There's six in total. You don't know which four are gonna come up. So what I did was I wrote the topic name here, creation, um, and then I wrote quotes from whatever you need to memorize. So quotes from Genesis. And then on the back, I put all of the quotes I needed to know. Um, as you can see, I wrote down um, perhaps what the quote is saying, all humans equal, and then the quote in red. And I would just read the front of it, quotes from Genesis, and then try and remember and recite all four of them, and then flip it over, and I'll see if I get it right. Um, I would also remember where you got your quotes from. I put abbreviations, so Genesis 1 to 27, um, and I would write that down in my paper, because it's better to know where you got them from. You don't necessarily need to put the verse, you can just put the chapter. So if you just put Genesis 1, it should be fine. Now, here's another example, because I've also got one from Trinity, or Trying God, quotes on music and religion. Um, and then, yes, I've got the quotes. I did it in the same format for all of the topics. And this was really useful to help me remember where the quotes are from and what the quotes are. By grouping them by topic, it's much easier to know if you get a 12 marker on this topic, just remember all of the quotes that you remembered from that certain flashcard that had that topic and that section. Another way to really understand your religion that you're studying, or perhaps you're, you're doing Catholicism like me and you're Catholic, is to go to mass. Because you'll really see the stages of mass that you need to memorize and just being there and experiencing what you're being taught really helps to consolidate those ideas and it'll make it easier to write in the exam. And as a Catholic, if you remember like the Nicene Creed or you know the Lord's Prayer, you can easily use those as quotes in the real exam. Even remembering like hymn lyrics, like shine, Jesus shine, you can, you can write that in your exam. You just say it all from a hymn. Now for GCSE, I did use solid card quotes and I used them because there's not that many of them. But now while I'm doing A-level, I'm doing all of my quotes on Anki. So before for GCSE, I used to write them down like this. And I would also have a copy on Quizlet. And that's back when Quizlet was free. Now you have to pay, so I wouldn't use that. I would use Anki. I would have the exact same thing on my Quizlet card or if you use Anki now, I would have um, perhaps quotes from Genesis and then on the other side I would have the four quotes that I needed to know. The next thing I want to talk about is my secret formula for 12 markers. Now why is it a secret formula? Like how I did you even come up with that? Basically uh, it's something that I've been using since year 10, well not anymore because I don't do RE anymore, 
but it's how I got 12 out of 12 and literally all of my 12 markers and in the real exam, as you can see here are my marks. This works every time. And I know different teachers have different things. Like even the teachers at my school, they say write an introduction. I don't write an introduction. I go straight into it. The main structure of my 12 markers, I have four paragraphs. You've got either for, against, for, conclusion, or against, for, against, conclusion. Now, it really depends on what the 12 marker is and whether you have more points for or more points against. But either way, you need to write for, against, for, or against, for, against. And then for the conclusion, it's split into two parts. You put the first part is summarizing what you just said in the four against four or the against four against. And the second half of the conclusion is your opinion. So your opinion on the view. If you say, oh, well, I agree with this statement, blah, 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 because this, or I don't agree with the statement because blah, 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 blah. And that's really important because now you've got four different perspectives. You've got the four different ones in each paragraph. So you've got the four, perhaps it's Catholics, against, maybe that's atheists, for perhaps that's like Christians in general, orthodox or a different view of Christianity. And then you've got your conclusion. And at the bottom of that, you've got your opinion, which is another source of authority. Now in each paragraph, you want to put the point, you want to put your quotes. I would have at least one quote per paragraph. And then in that paragraph, you want to put where you got that quote from, the evidence, and an explanation of what that quote means and how it backs up your point. And at the end of that paragraph, you want to link it back to the question. Now, if you want to see a model 12 marker question, I will have another video here where I display my answers for my real exam that actually got me 12 out of 12. So yeah, link will also be in the description. So I've talked about, you know, looking at the content. I've talked about looking at quotes, I've talked about 12 markers. Now let's talk about when you're actually sitting those exams. RE in general is such a high time management paper. You have so little time to do so much. You've got a one marker, two marker, four marker, five marker, and a 12 marker. Repeat that three more times. You have to do that in four times in total. And so time management wise, it is a mark per minute. However, when you're doing the beginning questions like question one, which is a multiple choice and you choose out of four options, that does not take you one minute. You can do that in like 30 seconds. And sometimes it's really obvious which one is the correct answer. So you just tick it off and go straight on to the next question. Even the two markers, um, I'm pretty sure they don't take that long. They don't take two minutes. I think you can do them in one minute. And because I was super speedy with those questions, I was super speedy with the one marker, two marker, four marker. Uh, five marker I took a, maybe a bit longer on, but it saved me time for the 12 marker. And for the 12 marker, I would spend maybe 15 to 18 minutes on it because I, I added up that time from the beginning. If you wanna know specific timings, you have to check out my other video because I have posted that already. But for after each section, you need to reset. Like if you think one section went really badly, you just have to reset, do the questions for the next section, um, think about the timings again. You have to time it really well. You can't let other sections impede your other sections because uh, they're all marked separately anyway. But yeah, those are all of my tips for GCSE RE. Let me summarize. So first, understand the content. That's really important and it will save you a lot of revision time, especially when you're stressed. And RE is normally your first exam that you sit. So very useful. Second one, quotes, memorize quotes, write down each one by topic and each one by section, it will be really useful, especially for 12 markers. When a certain topic comes up, you know, you've already got all your four quotes or three quotes in mind. Three, your 12 markers, you know, write four against four conclusion, against four against conclusion. Here's the video that you need to check out, which has my model answer in it. And time management in the exam is really important. So make sure you practice that when you're doing past papers, make sure you do questions timed. Like when you're revising, you just do all the four markers and say, oh, here's a four minute timer. Let me start it, finish it, and then say, oh, okay, I've got that much time left. That's how long it takes me to do four markers. That's how long it takes me to do two markers. So that means I can have this much amount of time doing my 12 marker. And if you can't finish a 12 marker in time, just move on to the next section, because maybe that section you're better at and you can finish it quicker and you go back to that other section. 
I'm pretty sure for some 12 markers, I was like, nah, I'm not doing that now. I have no ideas of what's gonna go on. So I just moved on to the next section in the exam. And then because I saved that time at the end, I went back to that 12 marker and finished it. You don't have to do the paper in order. You sh I think you should do them by section though. You should do all of one section first and then move on to another section. It doesn't have to be in the section order that they give you though. But yeah, if you found this useful, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my other grade 9 videos and I will have AS and A level videos also coming out. I hope you found this video useful and I will hope to see you in the next one. Bye!